Okay, we are recording. All righty. All right. Hey, uh, I am here with Matt Lytle. Um, Matt is an old student of mine um, from long ago, as we have figured out. Long ago. Uh, also, one of my favorite all-time students. Um, not only an old student, but my one of my favorite all-time students. Thank you. Thank you. And he is a professional actor. And uh, welcome, Matt. First thing. Um, hey, thank you. Thanks Jeff. for coming to talk to us. Yeah, my pleasure. It. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in this age of COVID, in these wonderful interviews, which actually we can probably talk and see each other more now that we're quarantined than we would if we were out free, right? And uh huh. And have you there. have you heard the uh, the thing about Shakespeare that people have been talking about with this? Uh, what what's that he wrote about? Lear during a plague? You know, I have heard that. Yes, I've heard that. That is that is so cool. Um, yeah. That he may have how many how many of these did he write? How many plays did he write during a plague? During the plague, um, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah, and actually, you know, it's all and you know, there's the whole thing about how he thought his son Hamnet. Um, um, I don't know if you saw the movie All Is True. I didn't uh, see that movie. No, you've got to see that movie because he thought Hamnet was killed in the plague, and then he kind of discovers that's probably not what happened. But it's it's I won't I won't get into it. Anyway, we're here to talk to Matt, not not talk about King Lear and Hamlet. Just yet, we'll talk about. <laughs> We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but Matt is a uh, very successful professional theater actor. Um, and um, I thought it'd be good to, to um, talk with him about his background, what he did, you know, when, when he started making the choices to become an actor and what it took to become an actor. Um, so, um, so anyway, so yeah, let, let, let's, let's get into it, uh, Matt. So um, take, take me back here a little bit to when, when did you really kind of start with theater like when when was your first experience with theater right well i was you know we all did the like little plays in elementary school and those things and mm -hmm. there was like maybe a hint early on that my parents were like oh you kind of like this but we sort of let that go for a while um and then in middle school there was a audition posting when i was in seventh grade for a production of as you like it and yes directed by <laughs> yeah you know you were my first play no, I did not know that. You didn't know this? I thought this is the whole, this is the whole thing. So I just brought it up to my parents and I was like, there's this thing directed by this guy, Jay, and it's gonna be at our school as you like it. And my parents were like, you have to audition. And they're like, you're not really doing sports or anything like that, you just, just go. And I was like, oh, and they're like, just go. So I went and I auditioned first play. I did not know that that, that was your first play. It was, yes, sir. That's what I tell everyone. And my mom has a picture um, of me. I'll see if I can find it. Maybe we can throw it up on your website. Of me as Orlando and as you like it. I'm saying you played the lead. Yes, I did, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you could maybe say Rosalind is the lead, but you played the, the lead male role. I did, yeah. In that, that is awesome. And I, have, I, don't think I, I don't think I knew that. I don't think I knew it was your first play. And cool enough, uh, I was Orlando and... Chelsea LaValle was Rosalind, and she is a professional actor who is thriving out in Seattle right now. Yeah, I knew that as well. So yeah. I made this joke with Courtney as well that, I, you know, when you guys, uh, Courtney came back and worked with the Shakespeare Festival, you worked with the Shakespeare Festival in Cincinnati. Yeah. I'm like, man, your parents must think that's either really cool or they hate me so much for <laughs> getting, you guys, getting you guys, like, to start doing Shakespeare at yeah. an early age and all Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, getting exposed to it at such a young age and people are always like, whoa, it's, it's unique among my actor friends for me to say that my first experience was with Shakespeare. They're like, yeah. wow, that's so unique to tackle that at such an early age. Um, and, oh, yeah. Yeah. You have to wonder how, like, that that's been the majority, like 95% of my work has been Shakespeare professionally. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, luckily, you had such a, a, a mastermind uh, to lead you through your first. I did. Well, your, your, your note to me that, I'll, that I am permanently, that I'll never forget, was that I was talking about Rosalind, and you were like, no, 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 Matt. You're talk this is like the love of your life. This is, and I'm in seventh grade and looking at you all confused. And you're like, you got it. You love her. You're talking about her like she's a chicken wing, man. Like I, I remember that. Like, I kind of remember. I do remember that about chicken wings. Yes, I do not, remember. That. She's not. You're like it's like NASCAR. No, this is you're talking about. <laughs> I'm like trying to understand love yeah. as a, a seventh grader. 
So yeah, for all you out there who are listening, you want to be directors, you, you, you make references to chicken wings and NASCAR. And it uh, will be a profound change in your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so that's awesome though. I, I didn't know that. But so, so you, you start doing it in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. You obviously had, any, I mean, one thing about Matt, I will say that you had, you had a big personality. Mm -hmm. That's obviously how you walked in. I'd never seen you before. And, and I, you know, you got the role of uh, Orlando. Um, basically having no experience with you, but I could tell that you had an inclination to, to uh, want to be an actor and want to kind of be on stage. But, yeah. but so you took that, you took that experience, right? And then, and then where did, I mean, so do you think it's like from that moment that you decided you wanted to, like, this is great. I, this is what I want to do. Um, this is what, this is the, my, this is what I really love the most in life. Or was it just more of like, um, I ha I'm good at this and, um, you know, I don't know. Explain what, what were your feelings? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. I mean, I, you know, I mean, hindsight's always twenty twenty. I think that, yeah. I think I found a community that made sense to me. Yeah. I think I always felt like a smart guy, but I didn't feel like the decathlon people or the people who were crazy smart. And I felt, you know, like I could do, I wasn't gifted or super sporty, but I'll you know, do a little bit of that and a little bit. And I, but I always felt very connected to people and talking and, communicating. I always felt like I was best communicating to people, even at a young age, just like talking and making people laugh. And so I was like, oh, this and the people that are in this community, this makes sense to me. Um, right. And so it was immediately like a, I'd found my, like a, a, a home and something that really helped me through high school as well. Like I really had a identity through theater. So we did that. We did uh, As You Like It. And then we did um, Twelfth Night and I played Malvolio which my parents still talk about with the yellow stockings. <laughs> um, and I knew I wanted to do it in high school. Um, but then I kind of, the, you know, the artistic uh, side of me of getting into more um, films and starting to think you know, about art on a larger scale, I was like, oh, maybe I wanna be in film. Maybe I wanna be a film director or a cinematographer. Mm -hmm. But I kept acting throughout high school uh, and eventually did Blythe Spirit my junior year. Um, and Which I came out to see, by the way. You did? Yep. You guys did it on the stage. I remember the whole the whole thing was on the stage. Yeah. 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 You and Leah and yeah. um, Leah Schulte. I was remember was in that. And, uh huh. Well, yeah. I also thought I was very smart then too because I decided that like British men should have like should constantly. So I decided my physical choice was to constantly do this. And I remember thinking that was like really really good. <laughs> um, but. I, anyways, the long story longer, the, my revelation there was, oh my gosh, after doing that, I was like, live theater is live. It's for yeah. people and you can't, there's really nothing like it to be in a room with, with other people um, performing for them. And I was like, this I think is my, no, I'm like, this, this is my, um, my avenue. This is my, my craft is performing live in front of other people. And I think it's a special, it was a special thing. So it kind of dawned on me then. And I was like, I want to, I want to go to school and I want to go to conservatory. Yeah. Okay. So you, so you make that choice. So, so later on, like you're getting towards the end of your high school career yeah. mm -hmm. and you've got to start picking a college and thinking of a college. So um, tell, tell just a little bit about that process of, of um, auditioning and, and um, looking at schools and where, where did you decide that you wanted to go? So what's, what's the, what's the process when you, when you get that far, when you get to that point? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's always, you know, the first thing is it's always a negotiation with your folks and depending on, you know, your individual situation and, you know, how far you can afford to travel and all of that, that all comes into consideration. I knew personally that I wasn't a singer. I felt like a straight actor, like a, an actor of plays. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to go to a serious, more like very rigorous, straight acting school. Um, uh, and so in my research, and I knew I wanted to go to either I kind of narrowed it down. I knew I wanted to go to a city and I wanted that experience as well. So I didn't even look at schools like Carnegie Mellon or whatever that actually were probably higher up on lists, quote unquote. Um, but I narrowed it down to Boston, Chicago, and New York. So I ended up auditioning for NYU, DePaul, Boston University, Emerson. Uh, and then Loyola of Chicago was like a, uh, wasn't an audition based program. So mm -hmm. that was kind of my backup so to speak but i also know amazing professional actors that went to loyola of chicago as well that are thriving and doing awesomely uh yeah and my two top choices were nyu and depaul and i think there's actually a fun story with this 
um, that both undergrad and grad school kind of had a similar trajectory. Uh, so it was like NYU and DePaul were on the top of my list and then BU and Emerson were lower. Um, and I got into DePaul and I was like, I'm going to go. But I also got into BU and I got waitlisted at NYU. Uh, so I was like, I'm going to DePaul. I'm going. My mom's like, you have to go to this weekend. It's like open house weekend before you can decide. And I said, I don't know. I just want to go. I just want to go. And she's like, go to this weekend. And I went and then it just didn't quite feel like the right thing. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And I was like, let's see what Boston University has to offer. And I went and sat in on their program and watched uh, a, a private acting session with a teacher and two students working on a scene. And I was just floored, like blown away. So that felt right. And then I actually ended up getting into my studio of choice at NYU as well. They called later and got me into Atlantic because I was really obsessed with David Mamet at the time. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> uh, it was tempting to go to NYU, but I was sold on the community and the um, and just the this the prestige of BU and the and the acting style of training. Yeah, that's great. And I'm going to ask you this question. And this is not a this is a, I want your 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 honest opinion. Um, yes, absolutely. I remember there was a student that we worked with who had the opportunity. He got into um, Northwestern and BU. Yeah. Um, it was a few years ago, and he was deciding, and his parents actually wanted him to have more of the college experience, so they really kind of steered him towards Northwestern. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? Like, what what do you think is the benefits of being in a conservatory? Um, as opposed to being in a, what would you call a, what's a non-conservatory called? Just an open. Let's call it a BA program. Yeah, BA versus, program. It's basically BA versus BFA. Yeah. Um, and there's a conservatory, which isn't necessarily accredited, right? So you can go to um, non-accredited conservatories that right. are, yes. you're right, that are still have rigorous acting training, but you don't get a college degree along with it. Yeah. But BU was um, an example of a BFA program that also, um, well, obviously it's BFA, so you get a Bachelor of Fine Arts. So, yeah. 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 But you, uh, just, just for those out there who are listening, I'm yeah. sure you still felt like you got a college experience. Oh, majorly, majorly. Yeah. Well, and, don't, 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 don't start getting into your stories, Matt. We won't no, I won't. No that. stories, no yeah. stories. But, but. <laughs> I mean, life, not those college stories. Life is what you make of it, though. So I know plenty of kids that went to BAs or went for the college experience. And if you don't put yourself out there, if you don't make friends, if you hang back in your dorm or, you, you know, you don't actively seek those experiences, they're not going to come to you anyways. So yeah. I believe that, um, you know, I did feel like it was a strong choice to still go to a, like Boston University is a great school. So I have a great university on my, um, just in my life mm -hmm. um, and was around really smart people uh, while simultaneously um, getting to be in a program that was 100% theater focused and um, all the way. Uh, yeah. BU did also ask us to take a few, a few courses. Um, so we could either take just like a few liberal arts or I was sneaky and kind of pushed myself. And rather than take a few liberal arts, I made them all English and got a minor in English on top of my BFA. Yeah, and that's actually another great um, point is that I, we get asked a lot about, you know, should I go, if I love theater, should I go and major in theater? Um, and I always say that, you know, that's, that's totally, you know, what you feel. I said, you know, I, I went to school and did not major in theater. Yeah. That's what I felt like I missed out on is like, I never, I never was forced to like learn the light board and the soundboard and do all yeah. those things. And so I felt like I was limited a little bit when I started becoming a professional actor about all the things and skills I had. But I also felt like the, all the other things that I learned in college, I could put into my acting. Yeah. Like I wasn't just immersed in theater. I was actually getting a, you know, uh, I mean, I majored in the classics, but I got to read a lot. I took a lot of history, things like that, which I think kind of, so it's, a, I think it's a give and take. And I think it's probably, I mean, I don't know. What would you think about? Is it, it's just probably right for the individual. Um, it really is. It really is right for the individual. And I think that you have to ask yourself what, what you want. So even as a, so here's another thing like to zoom to my career now. Um, I, I always have to ask myself, what do I want? And not just compare myself to other folks, right? Yeah. So I've got friends who are doing voiceover work for Audible. I've got friends who are doing commercial work. I've got friends who are working at Renaissance fairs. I've got friends who work in virtual reality. I've got people who became directors, stage, like, and they all started as actors and they've gone in a ton of different directions. Yeah. There are people who only do new plays. There are people like me that do a lot of classical theater. So 
It's also what type of actor you want to be or what type of artist you want to be. It, there's not a one size fits all yeah. in order to be an actor. And even, you know, you have to go to this BFA program and then all actors do the same thing. Like actors have very different lives and careers. Um, yeah. And you have to, yeah, you know, be in touch with yourself and be like, what do I, what do I need and want? Yeah. So I would yeah. say that if I, if I could go back personally, if I said in hindsight, I would, I would want a psychology degree. I would want an English degree and then I want a theater degree. I want all three. And so some sort of combination of those three, if I, if it was just going to go back and focus on, you know, right. Um, I like, you know, the psychology of people, I think applies to acting. I think the ability to read and break down a, a book it helps you eventually learn to read and break down a play. Mm -hmm. um, and then you had all the experience of theater, but you know, I always think, you know, they always said that about Olivier. Olivier said he never got a proper schooling. They said, you know, he spent his life immersed in plays. Yeah. That is, that is a proper schooling. Yes. You know, uh, yeah. he understood people as well as anybody because he, uh, right. you know, so. Right. But I think and, it's, yeah. I think my, you know, to throw a little, a little bit of advice is, to train your curiosity at a young age, right? Mm -hmm. So as an actor, you can get, if you're at a boring Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> that you don't wanna be at, you can be absorbing and looking at the people around you. And the work that we do, you can always be doing research. Yeah. But th yeah. the, the trick is to train your, your sense of curiosity and be like excited and interested in the world around you. Um, and that is what builds a wealth of stuff to draw from when you're acting. Well, that's a great point too, as well as I think is to seek out experiences. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, healthy, you know, experiences, not they dangerous experiences. experiences. <laughs> but right. even, the mundane, even the mundane, even yeah. getting with your mom at the DMV, you can, if you're a smart actor, I think you can turn around and be like, oh, this really boring lady behind the desk, she's gotta be a character in a French farce that comes in and is a maid and it's like, you know, really dry or something, you know, like yes. the, the, our well never ends. There's Correct. so much to draw from. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you're at school. Yep. Um, and you're about to you're you're going through. I guess you had a successful time there at, at BU, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. And just yeah. a note about BU, um, how it's a little unique is that we actually had a BFA, but then we had two majors inside of the BFA. One was called the acting major, which is a traditional conservatory track, and then the other one was a theater arts major, where you got slightly less acting training, but you also got to take playwriting and directing and other, you know, stuff to kind of be more of a theater artist, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did go the theater arts route. Yeah. So I was taking playwriting with uh, Lydia Diamond, who's a, who's a Broadway published playwright and was mm -hmm. literally with her while she was writing her really famous play, Stick, Stick Fly, back mm -hmm. in the early 2000s. And she was talking about the play. At, so that was like really special. And um, I got to think of things as a, as a, as an artist and not just, just solely from the acting. Part. So yeah, that, that did give me some freedom in my schedule. Um, yeah. Just part of that. That's great. Okay. So, so you're there at, at, at BU mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately we have to, at some point graduate and get out in the world and all of that. So as yeah. you're wind, if you, as you're winding down, what, what were your thought um, processes? Well, in that, uh, the other thing was that the winding down midway through BU also had an abroad program and I did a, semester at Lambda, London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, which was also a wonderful time to study uh, restoration in Shakespeare and just see a bunch of plays and watch the Brits do the, the classics, which was pretty, pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, I was winding down and uh, senior year came along and I was like, I, I was, you know, I was like dabbling in being a theater artist or a director or all these things. And, but I was like, I just, I want to act. I want to, I want to act as much as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. um, and while I didn't necessarily get an agent or really a ton of response from that undergrad so showcase, which is typical, um, I was like, let's go. I want to try to find a way to act as much as possible and just, and just get better and do it, do it in real time. You know, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so, so then you just went out and started kind of going through the grind or did you make like, were you making connections at college? Yes. Where you could go and get, like with certain directors you knew and, and what have you, or did, or did you kind of throw yourself, just kind of throw yourself out there? I mean, what's the next steps? You leave, you, you leave yeah. BU and what'd you do? Well, you know, the benefit of, of going to, again, the benefit of going to any place that has professional actors, directors, people that want to be actors, you're in a community that's already starting to work and it's connected. So my program was connected to a touring company called the National Players. 
Um, and they are a non-equity, one of the oldest non-equity national tour in the United States. And they do one Shakespeare play and one classic work of literature every year. And they toured all around the United States. Um, so I auditioned for them while I was still a senior and then booked the part uh, to do uh, a year long tour with them straight out of school. Mm. So Yeah, so I was lucky. I had work before I graduated. Um, and I did, we did Romeo and Juliet and I played Mercutio. And then we did a new kind of devised adaptation of Animal Farm and I played Snowball. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was, it was an intense year. So we, we took that on the road and there were eight of us and we, were, we drove the truck. Uh, I was the master electrician. I set up the lights in every, in every place that we went. Um, we took turns being stage manager. If some of us were on stage, then someone else like became stage manager during that time. And so I learned a ton and traveled all over the United States and performed for communities in the South and all the way down in Florida, South Carolina, out in Nebraska, Pennsylvania, Vermont, all over. Yeah, that's great. I, I always say I recommend, um, I did a tour with the Barter Theater. Yeah. Um, and we did a nine, a nine month tour and um, yeah, it drove the van, slept in the van, you know, type of thing, stayed in cheap hotels, yep. uh, got paid hardly a dime, you know, and it was the best time uh, as far as performing goes. Three shows a day for, you know, nine months. And, um, yeah. and it's, it's, it's training at its essence, you know? Yes, um, indeed. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool. So, yeah. um, okay. So you're out there, you're trying to make it as a professional actor. Um, <laughs> so then what are the, what are the, what are the processes? I know you got back to school at some point here. I did. Yeah. Well, I, I, I got, I got lucky cause I, because I was on the road, um, a lot of my friends went straight to New York. And so New York, you know, there's a lot of opportunity, but also a lot of people. Yeah. So it can be like a lot of people trying to crash into one door, Yeah, you know? And I kind of felt like I had opened up a window and was <laughs> going that way. But, you know, so I, when I was out on the road, I would look up auditions for these other theater companies. And I started auditioning while I was on the road. So I would audition locally or at the actual theaters and started to book work so no oh, i'm sorry like it, so this um, this will make up a scenario you're you're going into nebraska yeah and so you call a company in nebraska where you were going to be and yeah. then get in there and audition while you were there yeah uh, that's you, right. you shoot a little email to nebraska shakespeare and say hey um i real oh i saw your auditions are in a month but me and my tour we're passing through is there any if you have any time would love to would love to audition for you um yeah. And so, yeah. And so then I, I happened to, we happened to be in Cincinnati, uh, where I'm from, uh, while I was on tour. And I was like, hey, their auditions are like in two days. And I reached out and they're like, yeah, you can have a slot. And I went and then I booked a year after that first tour. I was immediately on the hook for them as well. You're talking about the Shakespeare? Festival. Yeah, on the hook. No, I was booked. <laughs> yeah. I was booked to work for them. And I, yeah, it's, it's kind of a complicated history, but I had booked that and then my summer was free. And then I, while we were traveling, we were in Memphis and we did Uptos um, and I booked Kentucky Shakespeare for the summer. So then I did, so then I was like tour straight to Kentucky Shakespeare, outdoor Shakespeare doing Twelfth Night for the summer. And then at Cincy Shakespeare for a year after that. Well, and I guess I think there's a great lesson in that. I mean, you're a very talented actor. You were doing a lot of work. You went to a good school. You still on top of that had to be be very proactive and very creative in yeah. how you continue to get work. And I think that's a lesson that you can't expect people to come see you perform and then cast you and fingers crossed, you have to go make it happen for yourself. And it sounds like that's certainly what you, what you were doing. Right. Um, yeah. And, yeah. I think, I think a piece about that too, for young actors is to remember that there's so many talented people and mm -hmm. it's not, and I, and this may be a little, you know, controversial but you're not going to actually go into a room and just typically just blow somebody away that they're like oh my gosh that's the greatest thing i've ever seen it it's actually more about how you carry yourself and who you are as a person and i know we had talks about this when i was a kid about being a good collaborator yeah. and and being an open and warm human being and going to these places locally gave them a chance to meet me kind of as a person 
and d- d- build a relationship. So it is, it's about your talents and about the, you know, the kind of work that you put out there, but it's also about the kind of collaborator and the kind of person you are. If you learn your lines, if you come in prepared, knowing your pieces um, and are able to, you know, have a friendly, open conversation with the people you're auditioning for can be just as important. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I think, I think that has to come through. I, I think that has, you know, that you're, you're someone that is open to be, uh, to, to being worked with. Yes. Yeah. And I, you're right. I mean, it's very, very rare. Um, we see a, just a, a ton of auditions every year and you see someone you're like, wow. And then when you see that person, they go on the level of other good ones you have seen. No yeah. one ever, no one ever like, I've mm-hmm. never seen anything like that before because we've mm-hmm. all seen so much at this time. And um, yeah. so then it, it, then it is that thing that separates you from, um, that other talent you, you do have to have the talent you know don't you can't yeah. just be a likable person and you'll get leads no. uh forever no. but um but still but I, I think that's a part I, of it i think you work more when you build personal relationships with people um and a lot of times it's work that i've gotten is from either getting in locally and seeing someone or you know uh having developed a personal relationship with somebody at a different theater company and them seeing my work and them being excited to cast me because they are connected. So yeah. doing apprenticeships, doing training programs, doing connecting with directors and playwrights and doing readings for people and things that, you know, are sometimes you're just helping somebody out can build a wealth of, um, of goodwill that can really propel you forward. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So then let's, let's the decision to go to grad school. Um, when did that, when... So then the next three years are an insane amount of Shakespeare. So I'll do it quick. Kentucky Shakespeare, Cincinnati Shakespeare for a year, back to Kentucky Shakespeare, then Nashville Shakespeare, then St. Then South Carolina for a brief production of Midsummer Night's Dream, then St. Louis Shakespeare. I went to Kentucky again at some point. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yeah, so I was like, okay, I've done. (laughs) I feel like I've done a ton. I've gotten the chance to take all my training from undergrad throw it out there and start to feel what it means to be a professional, what the demands are. Now what I want, now what I was sensing was, okay, now I want to take that and I want to put it and I want to, I kind of want to heat it up and then cool it into something that's a product that is infused with that kind of next level of training. Mm -hmm. Now that I've got a sense of the professional, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So then I decided to apply to grad schools. So, uh, I mean, that, I would say that's just from a, a, an outsider's perspective. Yeah. That's interesting because it seemed like you were getting a lot of work. And I'm not saying that like uh, grad school is for people who aren't getting work and then you go there sure. and get work. Sure, sure, sure. But it seemed like you were making, uh, you were doing a lot. You were, you, yeah. were being, you were successful. Yeah. And it seemed like maybe going to grad school um, would be a risk at almost mm-hmm. uh, just leaving that successful training that you were on. Right. Um, but you made a very, uh, I would say, intelligent decision to go and take what you've done, and then and then basically go back and and go back into the learning process. Not that we're ever we ever stop learning, but yeah. Well, I also got to tell you, Jay, I there were I was plateaued at a certain level of theater, and I was like ready, but I couldn't crack into this next echelon that I wanted to get to. Mm-hmm. So I think a good actor also realizes patterns. So I opened up the playbills of the theaters that I liked and I looked down and at the bottom in training, grad school, grad school, grad school, grad school. And I was like, ah, ha, ha. There is also something about getting connected to a community of people that are connected at these larger theaters. And so I started to realize there there was another community that I could plug into, which was that grad school community. You know, at this time, I didn't have an agent in New York and I was just kind of bouncing around regionally. Yeah, yeah. So the grad school thing was also, you know, um, like, oh, I understand that this will, should theoretically propel me um, into this next level of, of work that I want to be doing. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so picking a grad school, how do, how do we get to where, how do we get to Brown? Wow. Uh, again, it was similar to, um, to the, my kind of roundabout experience. Brown was, was more towards the bottom of my list, and I had... Yale and the Old Globe were at the top. Uh, the Old Globe was really high up because uh, A, it was free <laughs> um, and it was Shakespeare based. 
uh, and it was in San Diego. It was a pretty, you know, amazing experience. Yeah. Um, and then, so I had Yale, Old Globe, NYU, Juilliard, and Brown were the schools that I applied to. And then I, I ended up doing a walk-in in Columbia on the day, at Columbia, uh, uh, on the day of, um, of auditions, because they had some walk-ins available. But um, yeah, but I got into... Uh, I got into the old globe and I got into the final weekend at uh, NYU of callbacks and didn't ultimately get NYU. And then I got into Brown. Um, and it was the same thing. I thought I was so determined to go to the old globe and I went out and I visited and um, it was fantastic with lovely training and all kinds of people. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And then I visited Brown and um, there were playwrights there and directors there and, um, it just felt, it felt like the right fit for me. Plus I'd done so much Shakespeare that I was like, maybe I need to push and grow a little bit. Um, yeah. and Brown was, uh, they advocated for me, um, super a lot. Um, so yeah, that, yeah. they actually met the, um, they started with like half tuition. Uh, and then I told them for a scholarship. And then I told them that, that, uh, the old globe was doing full rides and all that. And Brown upped me to a full ride. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And, and, and yeah. now would you, would you say that maybe is there, do you think there's a benefit from being in the Northeast and as being in the out West? Like, yes. do you feel like there was a, there was a, there was more theater connections to be made at Brown than you would maybe at the old, I mean, even though obviously the old globe is a well-known, but it's still West coast. Yeah. yeah. Um, or, you know, or do you choose that? You think, well, maybe if I'm out there, then maybe I can break into film or do I choose the Northeast? Cause that's more of the gritty, theater area of the country yeah no i think you're i think you're spot on the, it, it brown is three hours three and a half hours from new york yeah. so people could come up to see shows we just we, we had a, a the you know the theater hub is in new york city and then you know even the auditions for all the regional houses like you know uh cincy playhouse in the park and, and other big uh, regional houses they all audition even the old globe auditions in new york for a yeah. lot of them. so um yeah, that, that felt like the place as a theater actor. I felt like, oh, I was going to be closer to that. And knowing also that Brown had a playwriting and directing program also was like, oh, those playwrights and directors make connections and meet more people and are connected to me. And when they know my work, there's been numerous times just by going to grad school, a playwright's been like, oh, yeah, I know Matt. Like, you, he would be perfect for this, for your new play. You should bring him in for that. Yeah. Or friends of friends saying, oh, you know this? I'm like, hey, you know this director? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, can you ask him to <laughs> invite me to this audition? And they're like, okay. And so it really is about that interconnectivity and finding a place that has a lot of people sprouting from it that are fertile, fertile places. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. No, I, was I, was saying, I, think, I think that applies to everything as far as acting and, and, and even writing mm -hmm. and all of that. You've got to call in those connections. You, you, gotta, you can't be afraid to use them because again, you're looking for uh, if someone's doing something great, they don't have to go out and start finding it. It's more people will come to them. And if you're not one of those people and you're trying to find the way to get to them, mm -hmm. um, then it, I think it would be, it's difficult to, you know, it's difficult to be noticed if you're not out there trying to be noticed. In other words. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So this, this blend of, and we can get to this in a minute, but this blend of being a professional actor is this active curiosity to get better into the work, to push yourself, to not rest on natural talent or likability, but to like push yourself and challenge yourself in the work. And then also realize that you're auditioning all the time. When yeah. you're in high school, you are, you are putting yourself out there for the directors and the people that will recommend you. You are, you are growing, I mean, look at us, we're reconnecting with my first middle school director. <laughs> That's right. It's, 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 a, it's an ongoing process. So it's important to remember that um, that's, that's the, people are always watching and you, you always want to put your best foot forward, um, both yeah. in your work and, and, and yourself as a person. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's great. Okay. So, so you go through Brown. I mean, you yep. went to, you tell us a little bit about that experience at all. You kind of got into it a little bit, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, um, and I didn't say, I mean, I, I did do some simple, some simple research just to find all these programs, both undergrad and grad school, just looking at top lists and, um, and, being like, what are the top schools and seeing what comes up. And then the other helpful thing is I, I had known some people that had either gone to the school or knew people that had gone to the school. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and had asked them to just talk to me over email about their experience. So I tried to get insight before I went places as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I went to Brown and it was, <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. I felt very seen and um, so much collaborative work and creativity. Um, and I got to do such a wide breadth of work that I had not done um, and just do brand new, you know, avant-garde productions of the children's hour, um, which if you read that play, it's not an avant-garde play, <laughs> not experimental. Um, and uh, we did, I got to play Petruchio in Taming of the Shrew. I got to be in a play called Mud by Maria Irene Fornes, who's an amazing Cuban writer. Um, I got to ultimately, and then kind of one of the special things about Brown um, is, well, let me, let me work you through. The first year, you don't do as much performing, but you really focus on scene study, development. You take some directing, you take some playwriting, but then you focus heavy in acting and just growing. Um, and then second year, you do almost solely Shakespeare. So they work you through this whole intense Shakespeare process. You do two Shakespeare plays in rep, and we did Taming of the Shrew and Winter's Tale. Um, and then you perform them for schools locally in the Providence area in Rhode Island. Uh, and then third year becomes about professional, you know, um, developing your professionalism and your career. And so we start meeting with agents and on camera people and learning how to expand all of that growth. Um, and something special about Brown was that they're connected to the regional house Trinity rep, um, Trinity repertory company, which like Viola Davis was at, uh, you know, Richard Jenkins was the artistic director there for a while. Um, so was Ann Bogart. Uh, from the Viewpoints book that many of you know. Yeah. So it's a pretty amazing place to work. And while you're there, they guarantee you one role on their main stage. Um, and I lucked out and I got to do uh, Biff in Death of a Salesman. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, was yeah. pretty amazing. Actually, one of their resident people had dropped out because uh, he got a, he booked another show and I was like, kind of got a bigger thing than I than normally happens, so <laughs> I lucked out big time, big time. Um, yeah. But that was one of the most amazing challenges and experiences uh, of my life. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I started winding up and graduating. Okay, and then we get we go from gr uh, graduating uh, and now back out to all right now. Yep. You are a professional actor and you are getting out there. Yeah. So um, you have to put yourself out there. So you're basically starting over again, even though you've got all these wonderful connections, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but you're basically still, you're on your own. Again, you don't go home and graduate and then go home and wait for the phone to ring. No, 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 yeah. no. I, I did, um, you know, we do a showcase at the end of those three years and I did pick up an agent um, with, a smaller, with a smaller agency. Um, and that was kind of a, a, a positive step forward. Um, but again, the connections I had made at grad school I, right after I graduated, I got offered to do Romeo and Juliet at our town uh, and our town at the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, um, which was this past, uh, Jan like a year ago from January in uh, 2019, January 2019. Uh, and we did that for three and a half months in rep. Um, but yeah, it was me out there just hustling the work and, and working my connections. So yeah. I, uh, you know, had the opportunity to do that. And then worked another connection of a friend and did a production of King Lear this past summer up at Saratoga Shakespeare. Um, and Playing, yeah, what'd you play? I played Edgar in King oh. Lear. Edgar and poor Tom, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's so. legitimate. Yeah, it, yes, my legitimate. <laughs> uh, I, the, yeah, the legitimate. Um, yeah. Yeah, so now I'm in New York. Well, not now, we're all hunkered down. Um, well, yeah, yeah in our respective homes, but uh, I live in, in New York City and I'm auditioning a bunch, trying to find that next gig. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. That's, that's great. So let's, let's, um, let, let's okay, so from, from, <laughs> from, from middle school all the way to where you are now. Yeah. And you are, what age are you now? You are? I'm 30 and I'll be 31 in, uh, in like two weeks. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty amazing to think of all the things that you've done now at age of you know 31. But again, let, let's go. And I, I think I could just from your your story, I think I could put together a here's what I here's my advice. But I want to hear it from you. Like, what, what would you recommend to a young actor um, who's just you know maybe in high school, um, you know, yeah. who um, is really you know uh, 
starting to get some traction in high school and, and, and playing some roles and has an inclination for this and maybe feels like theater is their thing, what would you recommend? I think that that, that active sense of, of curiosity and surrounding yourself with seeing plays, reading plays, and taking every opportunity you have to get on stage and work is, is the number one thing. Because uh, even in my professional career, I, I even took some smaller roles or at smaller theaters that people, that some of my friends may not have been interested in. But I found that when I pursued, when I pursued the work and I opened up my curiosity about getting as involved as I could and, and submersing myself in it, that good things kept coming from that. And I kept kind of finding my niche. Even if, it, even if I wasn't in high school, we did a bunch of musicals. I wasn't a musical guy. You know, that wasn't my, where I would eventually have a career, but I learned so much by pushing myself and by getting involved and not being too proud to do anything. Um, and, and really keying in on that, the love of what I was doing. Um, and uh, yeah, and then realizing, you know, the other thing is realizing those communities and those places where you can grow, those apprentice programs, those undergrad programs, and those places where, you know, you challenge yourself to, um, to work there um, or to get involved. And I think, you know, if I had gone back and advised myself, I would say some of those undergrad programs, don't forget, do require grades, good grades. So sometimes you have to do stuff that's not theater related in order to, I have to work side jobs sometimes when I, when I have a few months off. So yeah. it's important to remember that if you're making art, sacrifice has to go with that. So don't just think, oh, well, I'm just a theater person and I'll, I don't need to worry about GPAs and stuff. I, give yourself as much opportunities to succeed. If you love theater, then get your other stuff in order so that you can do whatever you want with your craft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's great. And I also, you know, I think, you know, it's important to like have life lessons here. And I think that, you know, you know, as talented as you are in all, in all of the wonderful places that you've trained, I think it's, if you're not willing to put the work in that, that Matt has put in, then I always say, you know, you got to go do something else. Yeah. Um, but it's probably that way, you know, I'm sure a lawyer might tell someone the same thing about, you know, you might be attracted to law, but unless you're willing to read case after case after case and stay up and, you know, outwork every, everyone else, you might want to think about doing something else. I would think theater is, is it. Um, is one of those places where if you are not willing to put yourself out there and go do those things, um, like Matt has just told us about for, um, for this interview, um, then it's going, it's difficult, right? I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know how you, I don't know how you succeed in this business. I think it's, it's, it's more of like, keep it as your hobby. Um, but if you want to make it your profession, you have got, you've got to outwork everybody mm -hmm. uh, that you know. Um, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think that's what I take away from your story. Um, and it sounds like you're doing that. Um, and you will have to continue to do that. Yeah. yeah. Follow that hunger. That's what I am on. I am on uh, audition websites. And I'm looking at not just what are they auditioning for, but who's directing it? Do I know them? Can I reach out to them and ask them to audition? Can I, if it's a playwright of a, of a play, I don't know. If I don't even get a chance to audition, I want to be reading that play. I want to be knowing what people are putting out there. and. Yeah. It's, it's pursuing that hunger and growing that is what increases that opportunity. So I think you're spot on. If you don't, if you don't find a hunger there, then enjoy it, enjoy it as a pastime, which is so okay. And oh yeah, there's plenty of community theater it. and Go stuff that you can do. Yeah, you can Go do for it. Yeah. But it's a, it's a full-time, it's a, you say professional actor for a reason, because yeah. there are, there's a professional element that includes res, resumes and websites and professionalism that goes into you know, really making this thing fly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, man. That, that's great, man. Let's, um, before we, before we sign off here, I was, <laughs> let's okay, tell my favorite Matt story. It's like one of my favorite stories. Um, there's a, there's a, I'll, I'll go, I'll go back. There's a scene in Hoosiers, the, the movie. Did you see the movie Hoosiers? I don't know. Maybe a long time ago. Gene Hackman. And so he's, he's coaching in this uh, small town in, in nowhere, Indiana. It's a famous story. It's a true story. And, you know, he, he's a great basketball coach. And he uh, apparently, um, he gets fired from, he's coaching in, in um, some big, big time school and he gets fired and, and disappears. And he got fired because he, apparently, like he and his a student got into a fight and he hit the student. 
And then he says, like, it's my favorite student of all, t-. you know, it's a funny thing is he's like the best player I ever had, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I saw that and I remember like thinking like, all right, I had this one kid, you know, in my, in my, uh, when I was teaching middle school, who was so talented, but he was such a pain in the butt. Uh, <laughs> he was younger and his name was Matt Lytle. Oh no. <laughs> so, so he was so talented and I could not use him and all of this. So, so I want to tell the story about what we did. Or like what I had to do, like, and it wasn't like, all right, I think Matt, this has nothing to do with you, like becoming a professional actor, you know, like, right, right, right. But and I want you to tell your side of it too. But um, I remember I was like, I, I was telling, um, it was uh, Heather. I said I'm going to just scare him to death. I said that's the one thing I've got to scare him to be, to to start taking this a little bit seriously, um, because you were such a, uh, you were so talented, and also you were so. Uh, you were so magnetic. All of the kids like looked at you and they wanted to be like you. And um, you had such a great influence that when you were a pain in the ass, you made everyone else <laughs> like, yes. the same. So were you in, like, it was, was it eighth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade? I think it was probably eighth grade. Oh, I know. Oh, I know exactly what it was. I know what I was giving you a hard time about. It was Cinderella and you had written in the side, the, the, oh, dad, yeah, yeah. the daughters. And I was being a little pain in the you know what because I you had written me like a side thing and it wasn't like in the central part of it yeah so I was kind of doing whatever I wanted kind of thing <laughs> but yeah. we we had this whole thing where we we kind of I remember I pulled you out of class even oh no I know the day oh yeah yeah and we sat down and we talked and said like if you if you want to continue to be in this play you have to you have to do this this and this otherwise that you you're doing even though you're the, probably the most talented kid in our cast, you're doing more harm than good. And you turned it around and, and um, you know, it's so funny because like, it seemed like, and I'm not saying that I was the cause of this. I just remember this conversation about how you had changed uh, a great deal after that um, because I threatened to take it away from you. Um, I said, this all could be gone unless you do. And it's so funny to to think about like, how you are like a perfect example of doing everything right, like today. Yeah. And and there was a time in your past when you were <laughs> more of an example of doing things yeah. maybe not as right, even though you were super talented. So yeah, uh, no, yeah. I I, re I remember that so. I actually told my girlfriend that story a few days ago. Believe it or not, <laughs> I was like, no, this guy. We had actually that day we had gone to like a Dave and Buster's, and you pulled me and we had, it was like fun. It was towards the end of the year or something. And you had pulled me and maybe like before winter break or something. And you had pulled me off to the side and um, we had gotten back to class and you had had this conference. And it was those conferences that were like the conference halls that were like by the office up front. Yeah. And I remember, and I was like scared straight. I was so, I was like, Whoa. Uh, and it, no, it left, it left a major impact. It really did. And it, you, and, and, and you, the funny thing is you do see people professionally now who haven't gotten that sense of collaboration or realizing how valuable everyone's energy in the room is. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And I know, I mean, it was something simple. It was a middle school play and we were, you know, um, but still, um, you know, I could see obviously, and I, you know, I told your parents this as well. I mean, you, you, all the talent in the world and all the potential in the world and you were great. And, um, and I said that, you know, it's if if he if he would would focus in on what he needs to do, he could be brilliant. Um, and you know, he's it's always you've got the potential. Um, and um, you don't throw like you know, I'd say that anybody's a genius and they can just go out there and be a genius. But you you see somebody who has the potential to be something um, yeah. special. And yeah. and I just wanted to knock you on the the path on it, just like a slightly different path. Jay Apkin, so, that you did, my friend, that you did. I, I, I thoroughly hated that and thoroughly enjoyed it, you know, uh, at the same time. Like it was, it, it's, uh, but it was a good, uh, it was a good lesson for both of us, I think, uh, as well. As, uh, yeah. So it made me not afraid to tell a kid moving forward, look, you know, you're either going to do this or you're not. As a matter of fact, when I teach a camp, I always sat down like the very first day of camp, and I've been teaching camps for 20 years, probably since you've known me. Yeah. And I set down the rules and the rules like, here are the rules and they're pretty lax and this is theater and we're going to have fun and you get to be loud and noisy and all these other things too. You start to step outside these, I'm going to tell you. And then if you keep stepping outside of these, we're going to have a problem. And, yeah. and I, I say that, and I was like, 
that's it. I said, otherwise, you know, and you have lots of, you have lots of room to roam inside yeah. of this. It's theater. Yeah. You know, I'm not teaching you very, you know, we're not in the history class where you have to shut right. up and listen. You know, this is, I want your experience. I want this, but um, if you start messing around too much and being a distraction where we can't get out of it and the other students can't get out of it, what they need, mm -hmm. um, then you and I are going to have issues. And I always say at the beginning. And so I put that out there for every kid. And that's probably, that may be the Matt Lytle role. You know, the Matt Lytle. Oh, the Matt Lytle role. <laughs> well, but isn't that, the, the lesson that you taught me was, you were asking me, what do you want? And so if yeah. my answer was, I don't want to be in this play, then if you had taken that from me, it wouldn't have mattered. But I wasn't realizing that I was working against myself. Yeah. And that's what I want to keep encouraging students. That's why I said the thing about grades or whatever. You don't need to get uh, out of the box grades or, or be amazing or whatever. But it's realizing the perspective is that if you want something, you have to look at what it takes to get there. You have to look at that hard work and the things that are always that aren't easy or are, you know, rude awakenings and being like, you want to be a professional actor. You got, you can't just rely on being funny and magnetic. You also got to work and grow and, and yeah. be a collaborator and be humble, you know, and that. Yeah. That, and it's hard to realize that when you're young. And I think that's a good lesson for the, the students who are going to be watching this. I mean, even in, you know, I think what you realize or sometimes in high school, if you're the best, you're like, well, I'm invaluable. Yeah. Um, they're going to use me and they have to because they don't have anybody else. But then, you know, I think it's kind of the, the reputation that, that kind of proceeds. Even like I remember middle school and I, there was a while I directed middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. But then when I when when Alicia was directing high school and I went to middle school, I just I told the kids, I said, look, everything you do in here, I'll, I'll talk I'll talk to Alicia about it. Yeah. So what you're doing now will affect what you do in high school. And so that that was always put your best foot forward because you never know what information is going to be passed on about yeah. you as a performer. Yes, yes. Um, you as an auditioner, you as a collaborator, and what you talked about is just being, being uh, uh, I think that's a, the best piece of advice I think you can leave them, Matt, is about the, the importance of collaboration and mm -hmm. being open. Because, it, you know, unless you're doing a one-person show that you're writing and directing, everything is collaboration in, in theater. Yep, yep. You know? um, and so, do, so do it for the love of theater, not a love of yourself, not a love of, look at me, do it for a, a love of making this thing come alive, making this play come up off the page. When you, when you make it you focused, A, I think your acting gets worse. <laughs> yeah. Because you become self-aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And B, people don't want to work with you. But when, you're, when your emphasis is on the story and the passion for the craft, you'll be amazed at how your acting will come alive and people will rally around you and you'll make a piece that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's great stuff, Matt. Man, I really appreciate you taking the time and doing this. I'm so proud of what you have become. I'm just proud to know you. And, and it's really cool to, um, to see all that. And any chance I get to, you know, I will drive anywhere if I can uh, <laughs> to, to see you um, in a show. And um, I, I would say driving to uh, um, Louisville Shakes and seeing you play Henry V, I, I won't forget that. It was awesome. And, yeah. um, and um, I'll keep, I'll keep, um, keeping uh keeping in touch with you and keeping find out what you're doing and um and uh hopefully we'll give some uh some students an opportunity to work with you at some point as well yeah yeah because i also do do uh private coaching and stuff like that so um hopefully we get a chance to collaborate and teach some kids that'd be awesome and maybe uh, matt will come down here one day we'll hire him to come down here and do some shakespeare in the park here in knoxville tennessee that would be killer when we become big so all right oh, man jay I'm, jay yeah. also if you hear of me getting off track, I expect you to drive wherever I am, pull me into a conference room and- You know, I don't, I don't know. I, I should tell your parents uh, <laughs> and I'll get some other people. I should actually, I should be on your uh, resume, my number. In, <laughs> yeah. case, of, in case of blow up, uh, contact this, this guy right here. And, you're my theater parole officer, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's All awesome, right. Dan. All right, Matt, uh, I really appreciate it. Um, okay. And uh, well, like I said, I, I, want, I want you to become a, a mentor to some of these kids that we work with. So I, yeah, I it'd be my pleasure. Yeah. All right, Matt Lytle, thank you very much, man. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Appreciate it. All right.